Hi everyone, looks like I am live. I'm gonna wait for a few people to pop on and I'm just going to check that I am all okay. So if someone is there, can you please let me know if you can hear me okay um, and if the visual is okay as well. Just double checking that I'm live. Alrighty, I can see someone has joined. Can you let me know where you're from and if you can hear me okay? I'm gonna double check myself, make sure you can hear me fine. My name is Chelsea, I'm an IBS dietitian. I'm based in Brisbane, Australia, but I help women all over the world, um, mostly in Australia, take control of their IBS with my simple framework. Perfect. Looks like I can see myself live. How is everyone doing today? Good? It's Wednesday, middle of the week. You ready to do some cooking with me? <laughs> I'll wait for a few more people to jump on. Please pop in the comments where you're from, what time of the day it is. I'm in Brisbane, Australia. It's 12.30 and it is a beautiful winter's day. We are coming to the end of winter now. Uh, I'm an IBS dietitian based in Brisbane. So if you've got any IBS related questions, please pop them in the box. Um, otherwise, we will crack on with making some zucchini parmigiana bites. Now, this is a really good low FODMAP snack. You can make it gluten free. You can make it egg free. It's wheat free. Um, so really allergy friendly as well. Alrighty, I'm going to now tilt my computer screen so you can see what I've got in front of me and I'm going to step you through um, some of the ingredients that I'm going to use today. And it should have been posted a few posts back if you wanted to go back and save it for later. Plus this video will be available for you if you're wanting to cook the recipe a little bit later on. So if you guys have just joined, nice to see you guys. Happy Wednesday. Let me know where you're from and if you've got any questions, we're going to do some live cooking now. Alrighty, so... In front of me today, I've got a few ingredients and I'll step you through it all. I've got some zucchinis. The recipe calls for a large one, but I've got two small ones today. I need um, half a cup of gluten-free flour. This is the one I'm using today. It's just from Aldi. You need two eggs, three quarters of a cup of gluten-free breadcrumbs, some salt and pepper to season, olive oil, uh, 100 grams of tomato paste. And for those that are sensitive to FODMAPs, double check that yours has no extra onion or garlic in it. That's one to check out for. So 100 grams of tomato paste. We need some oregano, one to two teaspoons for flavor. You can also use something like rosemary if you prefer. Um, some cheese to top off, which is still sitting in the fridge. And of course, some beautiful basil to serve. Hey Lauren, how are you today? Can you hear me okay? Alrighty. So what you want to do to start off with, I might do this, is turn your oven on. Preheat it to 180 degrees Celsius and then you want to line a baking tray with baking paper. For everyone that's hopping on now, we're doing some live cooking, so please let me know where you're from, what time of day it is. I'm in Brisbane and it is a beautiful winter's day at lunchtime, so perfect to make some zucchini pies and bites. So first step is pop your oven on, preheat it to 180 degrees and line a baking tray with baking paper. All good on this end. Thank you, Lauren. All right, perfect. Um, so the oven is on, the baking tray has been lined with baking paper, sitting ready to go. The next step is to get your zucchinis and slice them into about one centimeter or a half a centimeter thick disks, depending on how big your zucchini is. Now, this recipe is low FODMAP. However, I want you to keep in mind that if you are having a big portion of zucchini, it can become high FODMAP. So a low FODMAP serve of zucchini is 60 grams. Now, what does 60 grams of zucchini mean? So I've got my kitchen scale here. I'm gonna show you. Um, a zucchini like this size is about 120 grams. So like I said, a low FODMAP serve of zucchini is 60 grams. 
Yeah, that one's 120 grams bang on. Perfect, so if you're wanting to stay low FODMAP, with this recipe, I would not consume more than half of the zucchini. All right, so with me now, we're just chopping the zucchini into half centimeter discs, something like that. If you guys have any IBS or FODMAP related questions, please put, put them in the box and we can get to them while they're cooking. If you have IBS and you're struggling with it, um, feel free to follow me over on my Instagram. It is at IBS underscore dietitian. I share lots of helpful information to help with managing IBS symptoms if it's constipation, diarrhea, bloating and gas. Perfect. Now, I never throw away the ends because I've got a little possum um, out in my backyard that likes to attack my herb garden. So I actually keep those, put them aside, um, and I put them outside for the possum so that they, it doesn't go for my herbs, rather it will go for the little bits of um, scraps that I leave it. So I'm just gonna quickly chop up that second zucchini now. Let me know where you're from, I'd love to hear from you guys. I'm in Brisbane, Australia. It's coming towards the end of, end of winter and it is such beautiful weather. Oh, perfect. So I've cut the zucchinis now into little discs. Um, usually I would make this with something of a bigger zucchini. However, these are all that were available. So these are the small discs that I've cut. So let's pop them aside for a little bit. And what you want to do is get three plates. One, two, three. And on each plate, you're going to add the breadcrumbs, the egg, and the flour. So before I do that, you'll need to whisk the eggs. And you don't need to go overboard with the whiskey, just until they're well combined. Now, if you do have an egg allergy, you can replace this with something like a flax egg or an egg replacer. Okay, perfect. So I probably actually won't use that third plate. I'm just going to use the bowl instead. So what you want to do is put your breadcrumbs on one of the plates, about three quarters of a cup gluten-free bread comes. Perfect, and then you're wanting, you're wanting to have half a cup of gluten-free plain flour. Hi Julie, how are you today? Let me know where you're from. Are you in Australia as well? Is it lunchtime? What are you having? About half a cup. Perfect, and we'll put that aside. And what I actually add to the breadcrumbs is some salt and pepper, just to season it. So if you like me, I like salt and pepper. You could just add salt, you could just add pepper. mix that through so you're not getting a big bulk of salt and pepper. Now the next step is to do an egg wash um, and dip into the dry ingredients. Biggest tip here is to have one dry hand and one wet hand. Okay, I'm going to bring over my baking tray. Okay, actually, I'm going to put them on a plate. All right, so first step is to put the zucchini into the flour, so pop that there, then the egg, and then the bread breadcrumbs. And then I'm gonna put them on this empty plate, set them aside so that I can pan fry them before we pop them in the oven. All righty. So like I said, dry hand, wet hand, easier said than done. It takes a little bit of uh, critical thinking, you know, to get through the process. Julie, you're from Melbourne, you're a vegetarian. Um, these look great. 
California rolls, yum. Bake these tonight for the family. I love zucchini and parmas. So this is actually a good recipe that you can use with eggplant as well. Eggplant is a little bit higher FODMAP. I prefer zucchini, so that's what I'm doing today. But I hope you like the recipe, Julie. All right, this is how we go. Eggplant, uh, sorry, zucchini into the flour, into the egg, into the breadcrumb. Dry hand. Into my wet hand. Drop it into the breadcrumbs, dry hand again. And onto the plate. So I'll do that and I'll repeat the process for enough until I'm ready to fry some. If you guys are just joining now, we're doing some live cooking. I'm cooking egg, uh, sorry, zucchini parmigianas. Um, however, you can do this with eggplant. It's a really simple recipe that you can adapt. And look, I don't see why you wouldn't be able to do this with um, any other vegetable as well. You know, if you cut pumpkin nice and thin, it's a nice vegetarian alternative. Uh, if you've got any IBS or FODMAP questions, please put them in the comments. I'm an IBS trained dietitian based in Brisbane, but I help women all over Australia and the world take control of their symptoms. Let me know where you're from or what you're having for lunch today. I'd love to hear from you. And I'll try and do this nice and speedy without making too much mess. Now, Murphy's Law, everything that can go wrong will go wrong. And I have a gas stove top. And guess what happened? The gas is out. So you've got two options. If you're like me and you don't have gas, which is probably rare or your stove top is not working, you can use an electric wok, which is what I'm going to use today to fry these up before we put them in the oven. Or you can just oven bake them, um, take them out and then repeat with the remaining steps of the method. Let me know where you guys are from. I'm just going to keep repeating the process. Like I said, I'm a dietitian. I'm based in Brisbane. I help people with IBS every single day. Um, that's my key specialty area. But allergies and intolerances, whoops, is something that I do too. I'm trying really hard to have one wet hand and one dry hand, but it takes a little bit of critical thinking. And if you're busy on a live, it can be a challenge. Julie's had California rolls, but she's going to try this recipe later on, which makes me really, really happy. You'll have to let me know how it goes. Post in the group. I'm sure lots of people want to see. Julie, would you do it with eggplant or would you do this with zucchini? Like I said, it is a great vegetarian alternative. You can cut your zucchini um, lengthways so that you get a bigger steak of zucchini. But I'm just doing a little bite. This is really more of a snack recipe than a meal recipe but super delicious, I could eat these all day long. I am making an absolute mess with the breadcrumbs, but if you're not making mess in the kitchen, you're not doing it right, in my opinion. All right, I will do a few more. Speed up the process a little bit. Hey Jennifer, how are you? You're in Melbourne. I hope you guys are keeping safe. It's getting a little bit hectic in Australia, isn't it? Julie, I hope you're well too. You're dairy free, probably pasta for lunch. Never tried making anything like this. Looks easier than I thought it would be. Definitely, it is super easy. Anyone could do it. It's a good recipe to get your kids involved in as well. Um, it's a little bit messy, but that makes it fun. So I'm gonna add cheese at the end of this recipe, but you could put in a plant-based cheese um, you could add some nutritional yeast flakes if you want to keep it dairy free. This is how they're looking so far, ready to fry up and then they'll go in the oven afterwards. What kind of pasta are you having for lunch, Jennifer?
Julie loves eggplant. Okay, cool. That's cool with me. It's a really good combination. All right, a couple more. I'm just going to get both hands dirty. Who's messy in the kitchen like me? I try and clean as I go, but good intentions, often they're not always followed through. All right, I am going to stop there. I'm just gonna rinse my hands, hang tight. Hands are clean, thank goodness, that is a messy process. This is what the little bites look like so far. Now, the original recipe is to pan fry them for a few minutes each side until golden, and then we would take them off the pan, put some tomato paste on and some cheese on, put it in the oven um, to grill up. However, like I said, Murphy's Law. Everything that can go wrong will go wrong, and today I ran out of gas. I have a gas stove. Fortunately for me, we have um, electric hot water, so it's not going to be too bad. So if you're in a similar situation, you can put them in the oven to begin with, gold, make them golden, or use your electric wok. And that's what I'm going to do. Thank goodness. Now, if you're using a wok like me, you've got to be a little bit careful because they can get really hot. So I'm going to try and keep this on um, a nice low setting. I'm going to let that heat up. Chung, you're from Melbourne as well. You're gonna try with eggplant rather than zucchini. Awesome, it's a really easy recipe to modify. Jennifer's having pasta for lunch and she's gonna make it tomato based with veggies. Feeling a little bit lazy today. That's totally fine, it's Wednesday, that's perfect. And you're interested to know how this would go with pumpkin. Yeah, I think it would be really nice. To be honest, I've not tried it, but I think it would work. You just need to cut the pumpkin nice and thin and maybe Maybe microwave it first or put it in the oven first just to soften it a little bit. All right, this is starting to heat up. Now, extra virgin olive oil, um, Cobra Mistake is a really good quality olive oil. Lots of polyphenols and actually olive oil is really important. Fats in general are important because they help us to absorb vitamins. A, D, E and K are fat soluble vitamins, which means we will not absorb them unless we have some oil in our diet. And my preferred choice is gonna be a good quality olive oil that's really high in antioxidants and polyphenols. I feel a bit like I've been chopped off. Chung, have you had lunch yet? What are you gonna to have today? I'm just gonna try and make sure this doesn't stick. We'll see how we go. This could be a total disaster, but I'm optimistic. All right, nice and low, and I'm gonna put a few of these guys in just to get them nice and brown and after that I'm going to transfer them to that baking tray where I can top them with some tomato paste, some herbs for some extra flavour and some cheese. Now if you want to keep them dairy free the cheese is totally optional. Oh a jackfruit parma. Local pub on Uber Eats, super cool. You know, vegan restaurants, vegetarian cafes have stepped up their game. I went to one two weeks ago on the Sunshine Coast in Queensland and they had like an alternative for chicken karagi. Um, and it was amazing, they used mushrooms instead. And they must have done something because the texture, the taste, it was, I mean, you wouldn't know if it wasn't chicken if you didn't look on the menu. Ah, you haven't tried jackfruit before. Similar taste texture to any other veg. Oh, I'm not sure that it has much taste. Um, it's quite bland, so you add a lot more flavors to it. it. It has a stringy consistency. So I guess it's very similar to chicken breast in that regard. Um, I'm not sure there's any vegetables similar to it. Chung, you're having some noodles today. What's going in with your noodles? Now I'm being very gentle with the heat. I don't want to burn these. My wok gets super hot, which is great for stir fries. Thanks to 
to everyone that's joined in and commented, letting me know where you guys are today. If you've only recently joined, my name's Chelsea, really nice to meet you. I am an IBS specialized dietitian based in Brisbane. However, I help women and men in my online virtual clinic. We're doing some cooking, live cooking today, uh, and I'm doing some zucchini parmigiana bites. Now you can make this with eggplant. You can cut your zucchinis lengthwise to make it like a actual parmigiana that you might have with a meal. But this is really more of a snack recipe. Yeah, it might be a tough one to source in Victoria. Absolutely. I, I've seen some Coles and Woolworths now do vegan pulled pork and they use jackfruit um, as one of their main ingredients. That's what they use to give it that, I guess, pulled pork consistency. I'm just going to keep going at it with the little zucchini discs that are yet to be coated while these ones slowly fry. Going really gentle with these guys. Hi Nina, how are you? Would this recipe work with sweet potato? Yes, I believe it would work with sweet potato. However, similar to the pumpkin, I think you're probably gonna to have to soften it first. So either microwave the sweet potato before you slice it or put it in the oven for a little bit. You don't wanna overcook it. However, you do wanna soften it because we don't want you to you know, have a quick recipe like this one and then the sweet potato not be cooked. I think sweet potato is a great alter alternative. Alright, looks like these ones are getting a little bit golden. Yes, they are. Awesome. Now, I'm going to rinse my hands again and do some flip action. Now, you just want to get them golden. We don't need them to be burning. And I hope I can get my laptop in here nice and close so you can get a good visual on it. Alright, you can... Julie Chung, Nina, can you see that okay? All right, so there is one that has flipped over beautifully, nice and golden, and I'm gonna let the other side cook. Now this is the plan, like you would do this in a pan, yes, absolutely. However, I have gas, a gas stove top, and unfortunately, I ran out of gas today. Murphy's Law, right? And I'm being really gentle with the wok. I don't want to burn these little zucchini babies. Just give them some nice color. Yeah, it is so good to see more veggie and vegan options at Coles. That area has exploded. And most of them are pretty affordable as well. Some are expensive, I totally agree, but it's nice to have the options there and not cost an arm and a leg. I'm going to risk it and turn the wok up slightly. Some of these are really looking beautiful and golden. Other, others are taking a little bit longer. All right, I'm going to let these guys sit for a little bit longer and keep dipping. These look so yummy, thanks Lauren. I hope they taste amazing um, after walking them instead of putting them in the pan. Doing a bit of a gamble today with the wok, but where there's a will, there's a way. And I always like to say to my clients, my friends, my family, it's not about the situation, it's about how you deal with the situation, you know. The water that softens the potato, it boils the egg, and in this, uh, hardens the egg, sorry. In this situation, I want to be the egg. I want to be resistant. <laughs> All right, I'm going to turn that down after turning it up. I've got a few more to coat. So I'm trying to keep one hand dry, one hand wet. And this is any time that you are doing an egg wash and breadcrumb solution. Try and keep one hand dry, one hand wet.
You know what's nice to see as well? That there's not only so many options available, but it seems like people are really more like interested in a plant-based diet. And I don't think you need to go to the extreme of being vegan or vegetarian if you don't want to, um, but just having a few extra vegetarian or vegan meals per week is going to do massive things for your health because what displaces meat is vegetables or lentils and pulses. And we know people that live in the blue zones of the world or the oldest living populations in the world, they eat a lot of lentils. They eat a lot of chickpeas. And they're such an affordable alternative to meat as well. You know, a tin of chickpeas is 90 cents, probably cheaper. But my biggest tip is if you are getting canned lentils or chickpeas, rinse them really well. The aquafaba that they come in, which is that liquid solution, can cause a lot of gas and bloating in people. And especially if you've got IBS, it can really trigger your symptoms. So IBS is something that I am really interested in. I've got IBS myself. Um, and I've had it ever since university, so about five years now. But I've been able to take control of my symptoms um, by following the low FODMAP diet, going through all of the phases, um, and then also looking at other things like my stress, my sleep, lifestyle factors, exercise, and that's sort of how I help people in my online clinic work through their IBS and food intolerances as well. You don't have to follow a really strict, restricted diet. You don't have to avoid social outings, going on dates, meeting up with friends because of your IBS, there's ways around it. Life's too short. All right, so that is about all of my breadcrumbs used. About 20% are on my bench top. <laughs> That's right, I'm gonna rinse my hands again. All right, let's move these out of the way and get back to some walk action. If you guys are joining a little bit later today, you can watch the whole replay later on. It will be saved to the group. But my name's Chelsea, I'm an IBS dietitian based in Brisbane, and I help people all over the world with food intolerances and allergies. And we're doing some live cooking today, some zucchini parmigiana bites. You can do this with eggplant as well. And we've sort of had some questions about Stuff like pumpkin or sweet potato. And I think you could do the same thing. So I'm going to bring my laptop in a little bit closer again. So you can see what we're after, what color we're after on these guys. So see this beautiful golden color? That's what we want. So I'm going to transfer these guys onto my baking tray and put the ones that haven't been cooked in yet. So you want to have your oven preheated to 180 degrees. Alrighty, be careful. Super hot. Normally you would do this in a pan, but I'm out of gas. <laughs> Said it a few times today, unfortunately. I'm sure someone will be around soon to change it. I could eat these just like this. These look amazing. All right, I'm gonna add a touch more oil to the pan, maybe crank the heat slightly. For the new guys on watching live, what are you guys having for lunch today? I'm doing some live cooking. This is more of a snack recipe, but you could do a bigger portion and have it for lunch. Maybe serve it with a salad or some veggies on the side. Or some protein if it's gonna be you know, ricotta cheese, or if you're vegetarian or vegan, some extra lentils or chickpeas. All right, you guys keep an eye on these. I'm going to take 20 seconds to do a little mini cleanup. So just for anyone that's joined a little bit later, what I've done is I have combined flour with some salt and pepper. I've cut up some zucchini in half a centimeter or a centimeter discs, and I've got some breadcrumbs and I've done flour with salt and pepper, egg wash, breadcrumbs, just to create a nice Parmigiana coating on these guys. And I've used gluten-free products today. So for anyone with a wheat allergy or sensitivity, 
This is a good recipe for you. If you have IBS like myself, you want to make sure that you're sticking to about a 60 gram portion of zucchini, which is half of a small zucchini. Let's see how these are going. Need a little bit longer. Julie's asked about using chickpeas for hummus. Now my suggestion is to get rid of the aquafaba that they're in because it contains a lot of FODMAPs, specifically galacto-oligosaccharides. Now these guys are small carbohydrates found in healthy foods, obviously chickpeas, um, but unfortunately they're poorly digested. So they move through your stomach, through the small intestine, they reach the large bowel where all of the beneficial bacteria, the viruses, the fungi, they ferment those galacto-oligosaccharide carbohydrates, which can cause a lot of gas and distension. So that distension is the feeling of your stomach pushing out. The gas is the physical need to pass, you know what. And everyone farts, let's say it, it's normal. You should have a little bit of gas. I'd actually be worried about someone if you had no gas at all. It means your gut bugs are not working or they've got nothing to work on. But if you've got IBS and you get gas regularly, you know how painful it can be. All right, again, I want you guys to keep an eye on it. I'm just gonna do a mini cleanup. If you've got any IBS questions, guys, pop them in the chat. I'm happy to get to them. I'm gonna move these. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with the ones that I've already cooked. I'm actually going to wipe this situation down. So I'm not making extra, extra mess. So it is messy. Maybe you needed to have bigger plates than I had or bowls. Perfect. I am a big clean as I go person. So this is what I've got so far. I've got my little zucchini bites, um, pan fried to get that nice golden crisp um, surface on them. And now to this is what I wanna do. I wanna pop some tomato paste on top and then either some oregano or I've got some rosemary as well. And I'm probably gonna do a combination of them both. Can I use an air fryer with this recipe? Absolutely you can. I don't have an air fryer, but I'm thinking about investing in one. Chung, is it worth it? Or does anyone else have an air fryer that can comment? Now, tomato paste. This is the one I'm going to use. It's got no extra onion or garlic in it because it's, it's FODMAP friendly. And I've got irritable bowel syndrome. If I ever have onion and garlic, I feel it. You know, four hours later, I feel like a balloon. So what I'm going to suggest is you get a small bowl, Get about a 100 gram portion and I'm going to individually put a little bit of tomato paste on each of these little zucchini bites and then top it with some herbs and then some cheese which is absolutely optional if you're dairy free you can use something like nutritional yeast plates you could use a vegan cheese alternative as well like cashew cheese or you can leave it off altogether it's totally up to you now the recipe calls for mozzarella. Unfortunately, I don't have mozzarella. I've only got your regular tasty cheese. I like to use low fat cheese. Some people prefer full fat. But high fat really triggers my IBS. So I try and stay low fat where possible. All right, I'm gonna pop you guys in to view what I'm doing here. So I've got the zucchini bites. They've been pan fried and I'm just gonna add, hope you can see that all right a little dollop of tomato paste, just like so. Just enough for a bit of a kick. Is this something you'd try at home? I'd love to know. going to check on my wok. Almost there. So like we've talked about, this would be great for zucchini. You could do some pumpkin or sweet potato, but like we said, you might need to microwave or um, steam or oven bake those first. All right, 
excellent. Now, herbs that I'm going to pop on, you could do anything. The recipe says oregano. I think it works really well. So you can either mix the herbs into the tomato paste or you can just put them on afterwards. Mixing it in is a better option. You're not going to waste as much like I am. However, I wanted to do two and keep them separate. So I'm going to do some rosemary and some oregano. Perfect. Now, I am going to top these with some cheese. Like I said, completely optional. You don't need to add cheese to them. So I might do some with, some without. And I just get the grated stuff and I'm going to put a little bit on each. Now, I suggest that you actually get a large zucchini if you can. Um, but this is all that Albie had. So I'm just going to do a little bit on top. These ones here like that. And I'm going to leave some without. Oops. Now you guys can still hear me okay. I just want to double check. You definitely could use posada. You don't have to use tomato paste. Lots of people find that tomato products, tomato paste, repeat on them a little bit. That's because they're high acid. So if you've got reflux, they might trigger that. So you could use barbecue sauce, you could use sweet chili sauce. The call is really yours. Um, I guess it's how close to a parmigiana you want it to be. So I'm going to pop these in the oven and then I'm going to get the second batch ready to go. Um, they're not going to take longer than 10 minutes in the oven. I've got it at 180 degrees. So if you've got a second tray handy, that will work great. To be a little bit cautious of time, I'm just going to do it in batches. Now, don't let me forget about those. All right, tray number two, just a little bit of baking paper on this one. It's hot, so I've got to be careful that I don't burn myself. I've got the remaining zucchini bites. Ooh, yeah, broccoli pesto sounds nice. Of course, if you've got a nut allergy, you're going to want to make your pesto at home. I know there is one or two brands available um, from Woolworths and Coles that have no nuts. However, they do have um, garlic. I think they have parmesan cheese in them as well. So just be careful if you've got some food intolerances or allergies. Julie, I really like your idea. I'm going to put some pesto on mine too. I am super low pesto. This is just one from Aldi. So it's got the nuts. It's got a little bit of onion and garlic in it. So let's pop a little bit on. I think that's a really great idea. Right at the end, that's essentially done. Great suggestion. So, like I said, you know, you can modify this recipe, use the vegetables that you want, use the sauces that you want. Now I'm going to finish off the tomato paste as well. And you could leave them totally blank. I might leave these ones without any sauce on them. And like the first ones, I'm just going to add a little bit of cheese. It's a bit messy. I might keep them closer together. I'm going to leave some without cheese. And I'm going to do some with no sauce and some cheese. If you've got you know, family members with different food intolerances or allergies, make it your own, you know. You don't have to follow the recipe to a tea. Okay, so they are coming along nicely. They've only been in there for a few minutes. Okie dokie, the time is 1.11 p.m. I'm gonna give them an extra four minutes um, for that first batch, and then I'm going to check on them. What are you guys having for lunch today, if you haven't told me already? We're doing some live cooking. We're doing zucchini parmigiana bites. I am a dietitian based in Brisbane, Australia, um, and I help clients with IBS and food intolerances, food allergies, um, so that they can take control of their symptoms and find food freedom. 
I'm going to do a mini clean up again. So if you've got any questions, IBS, food allergy related, pop them in. And if you're wanting to find, this is the, you can tell I'm a dietitian. If you're wanting to find me on Instagram, my handle is at IBS underscore dietitian. Um, and my website is dietitianchelsea.com. All right, pop a few of these things away, tie up the workspace. I like to tidy as I go. I cannot work in a messy kitchen. It's kind of like my house. I'm not productive until it's clean. The washing has to be on, the dishwasher has to be on, floors vacuumed, etc. I might keep the salt and pepper out just in case we want to add a little bit more. This is what I'm drinking today. Chia seeds and water. Who's done this before? This is really helpful if you suffer with constipation or painful bowel movements. Chia seeds will expand in water um, to have a bit of a gel-like consistency and they actually help to pull water down to the bowel and soften stool up. Now you can have it plain like I'm having. Usually I'll add something extra like lemon lime, orange, mandarin, kiwi fruit, passion fruit, you can add any flavor. Or the alternative is, that you buy something like this, cold infusion tea bags, I'm gonna do this, to flavor your water. These are so good. And I think a 20 pack is about $3. So that's worth it in my opinion. I know some of the cold infusion tea bags are a little bit more expensive, which is fine, but that's one that I really love. And I would just let that steep. My suggestion is if you're gonna do the cold infused tea bags like me, let the chia seeds expand before you put the tea bag in. You can already see the color starting to steep out. All right, I'm gonna check on them now, didn't forget. I'm going to put them in for a minute more. The cheese is melted, but it's not golden. And I find sometimes with low fat cheese, it just doesn't golden up like full fat stuff does. But unfortunately, full cream dairy products or fatty meals, they really trigger my stomach. Julie, what do you think? Is this something that your family would like? You're going to give it a go tonight? It's so easy. And a lot of these ingredients you might already have in your pantry. So the ingredients are gluten-free flour, breadcrumbs. I put the list somewhere. Gluten-free flour, breadcrumbs, eggs, salt and pepper, zucchini, um, mm, tomato paste. We've used basil. Um, some herbs to flavor and some cheese to put on top if you want. All right. And if you are wanting to find the ingredients that I've used today, it is a few posts back in the group um, and the method I think will go up afterwards as well. But like I said, you don't need to stick to the recipe. You can make it totally flexible. Never knew about drinking chia seeds. Great idea. Oh, chia seeds are an epic fail. Why is that? So chia seeds are fantastic. I love them. You know, you can buy the Woolworths or the Coles brand of chia seeds. It doesn't need to be expensive. A bag will last you forever. And I add like one or two teaspoons in there. You can see that tea is steeped. Now, I'm going to check on the bites. I'm going to assume they're done. Oh, I don't leave the chia seeds in overnight. They need about 10 minutes to fully absorb. Um, and I add one to two teaspoons of chia. It can be really helpful for constipation. Okie dokie. I think these are done. I don't think they're gonna get beautiful golden. Like I said, low fat cheese unfortunately doesn't always. So 
So that was about 10 minutes in an oven at 180 degrees. I'm gonna tilt my screen so you can have a look. Not sure, just wrong texture. I wonder if you had too much fluid or not, not enough fluid. It's a little bit of a fine balance with the pudding. These are the zucchini bites. How do they look? Tell me what you think. Would you have the ones with tomato paste and cheese? Would you have the ones with just tomato paste and herb? In the oven, I've still got the ones that have the basil pesto. That was such a great recommendation. Unfortunately, I have to let them cool before a taste test, otherwise it's gonna be an epic fail. So this is my chia seed and strawberry tea drink. Super nice. I am notorious for not drinking enough water in winter. I don't know about anyone else. You just don't feel the need to, but you definitely do. 30 mils per kilogram of body weight is a good ca calculation to figure out your fluid requirements for the day. So if you're 100 kilos, you need three liters of water. Mm. Divine. If you're exercising or you're a laborer, you're working, working outside, you need to have more fluid. All right, there are our zucchini and parmesan bites. I'm gonna transfer them from the tray onto a plate so hopefully they cool down and I can do a live taste test. <laughs> yep, I think I could hold these down as well. They're a little bit salty, a little bit crunchy, a little bit cheesy. I definitely prefer savory recipes as opposed to sweet. So this is right up my alley. And hey, this is a great recipe for entertaining. And at the end of the day, it's a vegetable. It's super healthy. You can add as much or as little cheese as you like. That's what they look like. What do you think? Let me get that out of the way. Alrighty, second lot are done. I'm just going to flick the oven off. And be a little bit more careful with these hot out of the oven. Okay, so we've got the basil ones now as well. They look super good. So we've got the plain ones with cheese, no topping. We've got the basil pesto, no cheese. I put those around here. And then we've got the basil pesto and cheese. I think they all look amazing. I love my cheese, so that would be my pick. Or we've got the traditional Parmigiana bite. Okay, let me get this tray out of the way without burning myself, hopefully. So guys, that's them. I'm super impressed with how they turned out considering my gas is out and I used an electric wok to pan fry them first, but I'm super happy. I might just give it a, a try before I season any further. Mmm. They're good. They're really good. I don't think they need any more salt. They're really nicely seasoned, but I'm gonna add just a little bit extra cracked pepper. And you can use white pepper here or traditional cracked pepper. Um, and to finish them off, just for fun, I'm gonna add a little bit of basil. You know, and you can have it with the basil or you can have it without, but I think it just adds an extra depth of flavor. Something is going at my basil at the moment. I've got a feeling it's a possum. Basil and coriander is not standing a chance. So I've put some netting over it. And I haven't had any problems since, so I assume it is a big animal, not just little bugs or caterpillars or butterflies. What do you guys think about this recipe? Is this something that you would try at home? 
They look pretty good to me. I'm going to try one of the ones with the basil pesto as Julie suggested. Mmm. Yum. So delicious. I'm going to have to be careful and make sure I don't eat all of these at once. But hey, that is a super simple recipe that you guys can follow. You can um, alter it any way that you like. I had a question um, from Vero. Um, I have my chia seeds in my breakfast. Are they better in water? Look, it's up to you. And I would probably discuss this with your doctor or dietitian. General guidelines are if you've got constipation, better to soak the chia seeds. If you've got more likely diarrhea, then you're better to put them on your cereal because they'll expand water in your digestive tract and then take it out in the stool. But if you've got no issues with your bowels um, and you've had no issues having the chia seeds, keep doing it the way you're doing it. But they are a great addition for extra fiber and extra omega-3 fatty acids. Amanda, you can't wait to make them good. Let me know how you go. If you've got Instagram, tag me. Uh, I'm at, at the IBS or at underscore. Sorry, one more time. Last third time lucky. I am at IBS underscore dietitian. If you make this, I want to see how you go or post them in the group and tag me. They're going to become your new signature dish. Love that, Julie. All righty. Well, if there are no more questions, please hop on now quickly. If you've got a question you wanted to ask me, I'm going to sign off soon so I can have these and clean up, of course. Thank you everyone for attending today. That was really great. I had so much fun. You missed the zucchini recipe. It's in the group. So if you scroll down, you'll be able to see all of the ingredients that I've used today. Um, and this video will be saved into the group as well. If you want to reference it later on, you'll let me know. Thanks, Amanda. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to clock off. I hope you have a wonderful Wednesday and enjoy the rest of the week. If you are in Melbourne, like a lot of you are, stay safe. Um, if you're in other parts of Australia, stay equally safe. Um, look after yourselves and look after your family. All right. Well, I'm going to clock off now. I'm not sure how to stop. Um, end live video. That sounds like where I'm going to go. Have a great day, guys. We'll chat soon.